All right, guys. So yeah, I'm right here in um, Vietnam, in the jungle, uh, in, along the Mekong Delta, and I'm sweating my fucking balls off, to be honest, right? But that's when you're in Vietnam and it's really fucking hot, right? So this is my second time in the country. It's you know, as always it's an eye opener, just like it was first time. This year is a bit special because. During this time, they're celebrating the 40th anniversary of um, liberation and reunification, as they call it here, of the North and South. I read some of the local newspapers, and they also get a bit more blunt than that. They talk about it being a victory over imperialism. So it's been interesting to be around that spirit and that feeling as I've been in Ho Chi Minh so far. I said, right now I'm out in the jungle here on the Mekong Delta, checking a few things out, trying to take in as much culture as I can so I can understand as much as I can about Vietnamese people and how they are today. Um, so I hope to show you guys a few things in this video, kind of what, like, what it really is like here in Ho Chi Minh. So hope you enjoy this video from your good commie buddy John Dole. Alright, so actually we're traveling along the Maidong River. You guys can see man that river is really big. Really, really big. On a boat. It's really enjoyable actually to be on the Maidong River. It's pretty amazing. And you see, wait, you see those things that look like this like, driftwood? It's actually not. It's what they call floating trees. No shit. These things like float on the river and they grow and they get bigger over time. I think they eat them or use them for something for building later on once they get big enough. That's pretty cool. It's just great being on this river, you know. The sky is beautiful. I hear in Vietnam. Can't imagine why anyone would have come over here and bombed the hell out of this place and these people. They're so gentle. But they really are. Really peaceful. <laughs> there you go, this is the Maidong River. Vital river for many countries in Southeast Asia. It's really deep too, more than like five, six meters. You fall in there, you better know how to swim. <laughs> Some boats way over there, carrying other people around the river. You see a bit of a jungle off in the distance there. Yeah, really nice, man, really nice. A hell of a break from Tokyo. A hell of a break, man. Vietnam's a perfect place to go, get away from that stress. This boat's pretty cool. Nice. Just in case we sink. <laughs> mm. Alright guys, yeah that's what it's like to be on the river. Okay, gang, so we're out here in the jungle and uh, we're being pulled by a horse at the moment. Seeing like a little carriage. And, uh, way back out of the kind of middle of nowhere. A couple hours out of Ho Chi Minh City. A little horse, but strong. And uh, here comes another group, hey. so you can kind of see the front end of what we're on here. Hey! That. Hey. 
you say, lots of greenery, of course, out here. Very peaceful out here. People work work hard, but they, you know they're not. They kind of take it easy at the same time. They don't try to kill themselves. You know. I don't have a flag of it now. A nice stand there. Some of the houses out here. I don't understand they, they grow a lot of fruit out here. I've seen lots of several examples of that so far. And then fruit and all that. So that's just a little bit of what I'm doing out here in the jungle. Oh, I'm worried. <laughs> Okay guys, so one of the things I want to include in this video is my trip here to the War Remnants Museum. You can see a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah, there's now this is the museum that talks about the Vietnam War. It's a rather intense experience. You can see they got some tanks here out front. I wasn't comfortable taking video inside because it's a really heavy, intense type of experience here at this museum. It goes into full detail about all the war and all the things that, you know, the Americans did in Vietnam. It talks about fully disclosed about Agent Orange and shows the effects of people who dealt with Agent Orange. And just how nasty it all was. So I just walked out of there and I said it's my second time in Ho Chi Minh, so it's my second time visiting the War Remnants Museum and um, it's always very emotional, very intense just to see how ugly it all was and see like the experience the Vietnamese people had and exactly what they went through. It's really just a nasty war. You know, all the Vietnamese people wanted was a unified country to decide their own fate, to be independent and sovereign. The Americans chose to get in the way of that. They could not let that happen. And after the, the Vietnamese fight off the French, they turn around and, you know, have to deal with the Americans coming out trying to control them. So they had to fight even harder. You know? They said this museum really, you know, makes you think. It really make you question America. You know, it really make you question your belief in America. It kind of shows you that, yeah, you know, when Americans come in on a country talking about they're going to liberate them, Vietnamese here know for a fact and they can show you liberation is not what you get. You get imperialism, you get controlled, you get murdered, you get slaughtered. These people fought back, you know, and they, they won. They got their independence, they got their sovereignty. You know, it's something to be highly commended. You know, as, as intense and emotional as, you know, being here at the War Remnants Museum is, I am also feel quite fortunate because I can be here now for a second time and be able to have the experience and remind me, you know, just how ugly imperialism is and just what daddy America does around the world because it's a very unique place very unique museum there's not many places like this in the world that show you the ugly truth when American imperialists come to your come to your country and what they do to your country so yeah if you never experience this and you ever get a chance to come to Ho Chi Minh City you really should go to this uh, museum the War Remnants Museum and see for yourself a lot of stuff inside there. A lot of pictures, a lot of documents. 
a lot of um, kind of historical things about show of solidarity among communist parties around the world and average citizens around the world were so against this war and so how much you know people fought it and tried to stop it. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm a bit emotionally drained. So I think that's all I'm going to say about just walking out of the War Remus Museum and giving my comments about it. But yeah, it's a, definitely an emotional experience. Definitely an emotional experience. So like I said, if you ever end up in Ho Chi Minh City, you got to go here. You got to go here and you got to see this for yourself. Experience it for yourself, especially if you're the type of person who still believes that America liberates anybody. Okay guys, I don't know how kosher it is to film in here, but considering this uh, particular museum is pretty much dead empty, this is the history of Ho Chi Minh City Museum. I just want to show you something pretty cool in here about the um, an exhibit they have, the 1945 uh, revolution against the French. I'm taking it to show you a bit. We'll get a quick little bit of video if you guys can see it. Eh? to well that we're talking about and then and the October Revolution a really old publication there yeah. over here is some uh, statue of a famous revolutionary in their history a little bit about his struggle and his sacrifice some other old documents right these people good to see They are communist. They the life for the people. There's another exhibit of making weapons out in the jungle. Let's see. Huh? That's pretty cool, huh? Like I said, this museum is pretty much dead. Not a lot of people in here at all. So I think it's fine to sneak in here and a little filming, I don't think. It's not that big of a deal. Alright. Hmm. Considering how dead it is, let's try to go from look at the 1954-75 exhibition as well. Really quick. Let's try to the hall here. Look at the 54-75 banner. And here they got a lot of cool stuff too. This is more the time maybe a lot of you guys be interested in, interested in seeing about. This is um, basically fighting the Americans. Some stuff there. There's a reunification flag in North and South. Some other stuff over here. Ready to the war. This is uh some various artifacts. Some of the grenades they use here, a combination of canister and bulb grenades. Some launchers they made themselves. Army pictures of the Russian army. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a real quick over here. You can see this one here is a collage of photos during that time. Yeah. Right, cool. Now, I've been to a lot of museums, right? But most of them, far too many people for me to feel comfortable going to film. Because you never know when it's going to be an issue. Come here, real quick. There you go. 
I've seen more things. Okay, so I'll show you military stuff here if I pull back and show you a pretty cool painting. Yeah, swords and guns. And shoe relics. Some more guns they used during the fighting. Radio equipment. And more guns. It's an ounce of the victory. Gas mask. Awards. Okay. Now Republic of Vietnam flag. South Vietnam flag. Really rare. It looks like an original. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna pull back now. I'm gonna show you something pretty amazing. I think you guys appreciate this kind of socialist realism here. All the way back. That's a victory. A victory collage. You see that? It goes up. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so I thought you guys might enjoy this. So again, this is just a little bit of the Ho Chi Minh City Museum. Like I said, I've been to a lot of different museums here, but this is the only one I just did. There's like no one here, so I just turn on my camera and try to get a little footage for you guys. Because a lot of places I go here, I'm not exactly sure you can just turn on your camera, so I just, I just take pictures they don't mind, but video, not so sure they'd be all that comfortable with. And there's a few museums I'm not comfortable taking video at. Some of them are rather sensitive. There's a Ho Chi Minh campaign. Before we go off, I'll show you that. I'm going to slow down and read it later. Alright, so that's that. A lot more stuff in here, but this I thought this would be the most interesting for you guys. Alright, so many of you might be wondering what the streets of Ho Chi Minh actually look like, right? So, you know, I'm being very selective about filming in the city. For two reasons. Number one, it's all out of the country. With it, and number two, yeah, experience I'd rather like to take in and enjoy rather than try to film it as a video. I've done a bit of filming and I do want to take a walk in the streets here. So, motorbikes are real popular. Across the street. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. Everything. Well, people tend to take it easy here because of the heat. Okay. You don't see people running around so much. I tend not to get uh, too damn excited about much of anything. But it's something. It's like, I don't know, a little bit after 4 p.m. It's kind of like down the streets. People are very life. You see a lot of party banners. National banners from time to time. Just on this street. I don't know if we'll walk further enough. You see some like large type of banners that you probably really want to see on film. We'll see. There's a taxi. Yeah, pro tip if you come to Ho Chi Minh, only use taxis that have a meter on them. And if somebody offers you a ride on a random motorbike, don't take it. You get ripped off. Just a whatever place. See across the street there. Lots of businesses, you know. The economy is thriving here. And a state of constant development as well. So what you mean is exploding with growth. It's a flag banner. The national flag. It's a really common sight. You see the national flag pretty much everywhere you go. You see it. 
people tend to be quite proud of the country. Which I don't blame them. Vietnam's been through a lot and it's come a long way. It's the days of the war. We'll continue walking. At the moment everything seems fine. There's a whole roll of damn motorbikes that are everywhere. Everywhere. Streets clear. See down there. Cross again. Stand up for the rain down here. That's the beginning of the rainy season. But I haven't been rained out yet. It's just the beginning. If I came here later in May, God, floored with rain every day. Walking, walking. about the business, you know. Average day in Ho Chi Minh City. Spectacular. Oh, that oh, no, thank you. That's common. If you look foreign, if you look Western, a lot of people come up to you trying to sell you stuff. I'm not going to say no. It's one of those things. I'm in Ho Chi Minh. Say hello. That's more great than I do. People tend to be a bit friendlier. A genuine friendliness does come across. Pick and choose your moments. Usually the friendliness is, you know, because you're foreign and want to teach you about something. You know, you get used to it. There's a whole row of flags, right? A little shop, a little place there. There's a flag out there. Probably more flags here than normal because, like I said, this is the time of year they're celebrating a lot of stuff. Hello. This is the 40th anniversary Hello. of uniting the country. Getting a lot of attention because I'm filming now. More than normal, to be honest. Hello. 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 <laughs> Not that kind of massage. That's a central building over there. Kind of an important one. I'll keep walking a bit more. I feel so much okay. okay, so there's a sign you might be interested in. There's a. Um, Celebrating. 40 years. Americans, I mean, re reunification of the country. So we're going to walk just a little bit more, and we need to finish up. Like I said, I don't film too much in the city because it's a new thing for people. I'm not used to that. So just cross, just kind of go for it, right through the traffic. <laughs> I guess I'm just kind of used to it or not scared of it. You know, but I just kind of it. There are people just kind of hanging out, eating and relaxing after a hard day's work. About that time of day here. But you remember, most people start working for the day. There's the evening and night shift, you know, it kicks up to you. You just kind of chill and relax. Just kind of take it easy. As hot as it is in this, city, in this country, taking it easy is kind of tired. Let's walk a little bit more. And I'll finish up this whole walkabout. By the way, if you look up there, that's the big cathedral, the Catholic Cathedral. Very beautiful, very old. How old it is, man? It's way damn old. It's called the nature of Notre Dame Cathedral. Very famous from what I understand. There's a Catholic population in the country. So we're heading to this big ass park here. And they end up finishing up right there. 
Oh yeah, this is a major intersection here. You can see more crazy uh, Ho Chi Minh City crossing the street here, right? <laughs> so you gotta kinda wait to pick your moments here, right? It's a rather busy street. But here's what you do. I'm not gonna track that bus. Pick out this bus and we'll go for it. Alright, watch this. How you do it? <laughs> That's just for me. It's just always fun to do that. So this big park where um, people chill and relax. Rather, there's the old hammer and sickle banner. Again, it's another common sight. I don't know if you can see it. And I do apologize. The video's a bit herky, they're jerky, but it's really one-handed. I don't know if you can see it, but down there they have. Um, 40th anniversary. I have the United flag and the um, North and South flag. Okay, I don't know how well you can see it. It's closer than the camera shows on the left. Alright, some more flags. Camera and sickle there. I'm going to do a little camera and sickle as we come up on the street here. This is a ancient city. I'm glad I was able to get a bit of walkabout. Let me see a bit of what the city actually looks like. <coughs> what these actually are. Here's what I do to try to finish this up. I think I'm trying to remember to try this whole. Uh, well, we got a stoplight here, so it's supposed to be a lot easier, but you see the traffic again. Motorbikes are really popular, taxis everywhere. Now, I'll try to show you something cool. I hope I have another video time left here to do this. That's it. pretty quick. But the good thing about this city, they don't have those god awful long stop crosswalk lights like they have in Tokyo. That's a government message. Anytime you see those like straight red banners like that, that's a government message. Okay, I think we can almost help it. Alright, we're green now to see if traffic stops. Last time I was here, they didn't have these uh, street lights, man. It was all like ballsy all the time. Just had to kind of go for it. They changed that a little bit. Kind of happy. Alright, so here's what I want to show you. I think you guys are probably real interested in seeing this, but some of the modern propaganda posters celebrating 40 years. You can see those. Socialist realism. Modern socialist realism. Different types they have. There's some more down here you can see. There's an up close look at that 40 years thing I was trying to show you. At night they light this up, it looks really nice. Nice shot back. There's some more of those posters on the wall here in this building. They have those everywhere right now, literally. We're making a big deal about this. Some more. There's a few more. Let's see. Oops. Particularly like this one. Some of this one. If we pull back, see some of these on the wall there. Like I said, I figure you guys want to see those, probably the most. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like those, you know. But they are pretty cool. In modern age, you just don't see a lot of socialist realism. There's some more across the street there. There's the unified flags. I have up in some type of government building, not sure what that is. Can't do for sure. But there you go, alright? 21st century Ho Chi Minh City. Hope you guys enjoyed that little walkabout with me, eh? So, um, probably gonna head on and do something else right now. I wouldn't mind a cold beer because I've already broken a sweat because it's so hot up a lot. Even, even after the rainfall, man, I broke out of sweat. It's always hot here. 
That's just Vietnam. It's a hot place. So, again, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. All right, so guys, check this out. This is really crazy food I'm having, right? It's just some little bit of meat, and you wrap those in that, and you eat it, all right? But check this thing out right here, right? It looks like a, a pineapple chicken, right? You see what that, but there's something inside this bad boy, right? Oh, rice, man, no shit, fried rice. Fried rice inside the damn pineapple chicken, right? That's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I just had to share that, man. Anyways, this is, you know, eating pure Vietnamese food. All right, so this is what the military's propaganda on the TV looks like here in uh, Ho Chi Minh. I don't know exactly what the hell they're talking about, though. But they're all dressed up in military garb, and they were singing and dancing in military uniforms earlier. Oh, man. They talk fast. You can see some of what their uniforms look like here. Yeah, and there's this. All right, so... Bullets, Let's see, bullets, bases, and flags. And there's something I noticed that's really common in Vietnam. We're always talking about building something, making something, all the time. And even the military here, the communist parties, the military, they're all about that too, always building something, doing something. First they're talking about gas masks, but now they're talking about how they make them. Oh, a thing that we're going on about. Gas mask. I think that's something industrial there, though. It's pretty nice compared to what the type of television I've seen out of like other communist parties that produce this stuff in their respective countries. Yeah. They're making all kinds of stuff, aren't they? All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's a bit of what, like, the party's official state programming looks like here from Ho Chi Minh City. Alright guys, so 
Here I am coming. Beat up from vacation, you know, kind of tired. Kind of late at night, I'm gonna be leaving. Put you in here in a few hours. And I really hope you enjoy this um, little video I'll put together of some of the things I experienced and saw during my time here. Now, of course, I didn't show you everything. I got a lot of stuff this time around my second visit. I went to a slew of museums. I was able to show you a little bit of one of those. Saw a lot of stuff. Picked up a lot of interesting things that I thought were worthy to kind of bring back to Tokyo. You know, in general, it just had a pretty good time, but man, it's balls hot here in Ho Chi Minh, in Vietnam in general. I think the heat's kind of um, beat me down a little bit, but regardless of that, I had a pretty good time, and I'm kind of sad to leave. But you know, nothing lasts forever. You gotta go back to Tokyo, start my regular life again. So again, I really hope you enjoyed a little bit into what it was like for me to be here this time around. And some of the stuff I bothered to get on video and some of my thoughts about some of the things I was experiencing while I was here. So, till next time, it's me, John Doe from Ho Chi Minh City currently. Check it out.